Thank you, Justin. Welcome to Military Entrance Processing Center Oceanside. If you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. <laughs> I see some of you are laughing. It's like, oh, very nervous. Um, I don't get up to Oceanside very much. I was stationed here in San Diego in the Navy, and um, I have a whole bunch of Marine Corps jokes, <laughs> but um, I'll save that for another night. <laughs> The day I got out of the Navy, I walked down the gangplank with a sea bag slung over my shoulder and two thoughts on my mind. USN, never again. And that goes double for San Diego. I had my reasons, inflexible discipline, stifling conformity, rules. I hated the way the Navy tried to squeeze every bit of individuality out of me. It was just another piece of government property put in harm's way. When I needed to blow off some steam, I'd hit the streets of San Diego, but there was nowhere to go. The gas lamp hadn't been invented yet. I didn't have a car to go to the beach, so I'd take the trolley to Horton Plaza, get a lemonade from a hot dog on a stick, fill it with gin, and try to meet girls at the mall. <laughs> But the thing about being a sailor in a sailor town is that people tend to treat you like some unruly creature that only wants to drink, fight, and screw. All of which was more or less true, but still. In San Diego, sailors are treated like transits, like fruit pickers or carnies with at least one social disease. That left Tijuana, a place where sailors were hustled, robbed, and assaulted, like my shipmate Duane who got hit in the face with a bottle and lost an eye. And that was the end of Dwayne's adventures in the fleet. He was given a medical discharge and we never saw him again. I couldn't wait to be done with San Diego. And when that day came, I went all the way across the country to use my sea college money 2,500 miles away. But life has a way of making you revisit the assertions of your youth because I did come back to San Diego to get married. And now I live here. And every night I lay my head down just a few miles from the Navy station. I'd be hard pressed to live any closer to the place I swore I'd never come back to. I have no idea how this happened. My mother has a theory. She came out to visit a few summers ago and my wife, Nuvia, and I took her out to dinner at a restaurant in Coronado. We watched the boats go by in the bay as the sun went down, and it made her nostalgic for the time when she, too, lived in San Diego. That was back in 1967. My father was stationed in North Island for a swift boat training, and my parents wanted to be together before he was shipped off to Vietnam. They splurged and rented a beachfront apartment they really couldn't afford, and that's where I was conceived, right there on the beach, right here in San Diego. And according to my mother, that's why I keep coming back, like, <laughs> like salmon swimming back to its home waters. The Pacific salmon are particularly strong swimmers. It's not uncommon for them to swim from California to the Sea of Japan. And some, make, some of them make this journey several times in their lifetime, but they always come back. You could say it's their destiny, an ancient memory encoded in their DNA. After dinner that night, which I'm happy to report did not include salmon, we went in search of this magical place where I was hatched, a place called Imperial Beach. <laughs> There was only one problem, is I have a terrible sense of direction. I frequently get lost, and often very close to home. I can almost always be counted on to take the wrong exit, make the wrong turn. I rely on the GPS on my phone to get to places I've been to dozens of times before. But what does that mean exactly? What does it mean to get turned around? And why do I have such poor instincts for finding my way home? Easy. I inherited them from my mother. We're directionally challenged, and now we were chasing a 44-year-old memory. And although I've learned not to trust my mother when it comes to directions, 
On the way to Imperial Beach, she swore she could remember her old address. It was adjacent to a bar that claimed to be the most southwestern saloon in all of the United States. The IB Forum, my wife asked. My mom didn't remember, but Nuvia has an interesting story about the place. After breaking up with some loser, she went into the IB Forum to drown her sorrows. A friend of hers was learning how to bartend, and Nuvia got ridiculously drunk. You too came on the jukebox, and this resulted, as it often does, in a long crying jag. <laughs> She went outside and shouted at the stars, when am I going to find the man for me? Then she threw up in the parking lot. <laughs> but little did she know that her future husband was conceived just a few steps away. Now while Nuvia told this story, I struggled with the GPS, but something wasn't right. As we crept down the strand looking for the building, I realized the apartment numbers were off, way off, like by a thousand. And the street name wasn't right either. My mother insisted that it looked familiar, which meant we were probably going to end up in TJ. But when we passed the IB Forum, my mother pointed to an apartment building and shouted, that's it. I looked at my phone. We would plugged in the wrong address and the wrong street, and yet it guided us right to this spot. It's weird. It was getting late. It was nearly dark, and the apartments all looked the same. I had my doubts, but my mother walked right into the courtyard as if 44 years hadn't passed. She pointed out how the laundry room was on one side and the entrance to the beach on the other. And there they were. The three of us went around the building to the beach, and I was struck by how close to the ocean we were. The sound of the crashing surf filled our ears. Evening fog rolled in, dampening our clothes and leaving a salty scrim on the rocks and railings. This is where we live, my mother said. This is where you were conceived. And suddenly, it all clicked. Being summoned to San Diego by the Navy when I was just a kid. All those journeys back and forth across the country, all those temporary addresses, it seemed like such a wayward way to build a life. A series of journeys without rhyme or reason. But from the perspective of the Pacific salmon, it made perfect sense. This is where I was spawned. This is where I returned to make a family. Because in spite of not knowing where I was going, my instincts kicked in and guided me home. <laughs>